the one personality show at the Star Chat Radio on Star 103.5 FM. It is said that you do not write your life with words. You write it with actions. What you think is not important. It is only important what you do. Patrick Ness. Well, my guest tonight has gained a reputation for the gift of the garb and mastery of literary devices, but is loved and loathed in equal measure. A casual look into his life shows that his passion and gift collided to produce the force of personality. Our guest tonight, ladies and gentlemen, was born a year before Ghana gained independence, 2nd February 1956, and he hails from San Rugo in the North. If you ask him, If you ever read it, A recognizable voice for the minority in Parliament as a ranking member of the Communications Committee. He has gained popularity for not just his critical voice and thoughts, but also his vast repertoire of proverbs. Tonight, we will explore his thoughts on the governance of the country, our dear country, Ghana, his life story and struggles to serve his constituents, and also the values that we build and hold on to as a country. Al Hassan Bashir Al Hassan Fushedi, ABA Fushedi, MP for Sanarugu, a minority spokesperson on communications in Parliament, is our special guest right here on the award winning personality show Star Chat. Good evening, Ghana. Good evening, ABA Fushedi. Honorable, you're most welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, it's an honor to be here. It's a pleasure uh, to host you, sir. Uh, Growing up, we read your stories, we looked up to you, and we still look up to you. And I'm happy that today I'm sitting in front of a giant, not just interviewing you, but honoring you and saying thank you for being a trailblazer. Thank uh, you. And, and let me thank you very much. I, I really wish, I mean, Star TV is uh, where uh, your network star is one of the very admirable stations I listen to on a daily basis. Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, this. They say that salt is not in a hurry to praise itself. If it's in the soup and you taste it, you bear eloquent testimony. Tell them. So I want to say, not because I'm sitting before you, mm -hmm. but that you are doing a very good job. And you don't need to blow your trumpet. Others will blow them for you. Thank you, Honorable. Another proverb for that for Star FM will be what? Oh, to say that when they count hot things, they remove fire first. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening and welcome. This is Star Chat and it's proudly sponsored by MTN Everywhere You Go. Haptel is everything you. Core mixture for your general well-being and GCB Bank, your bank for life. I am your host and my name is Bolare. So once again, Honorable, you're most welcome. Thank you so much. I'm, I, on, I'm honored. The pleasure is mine. Wow. Glad to have you here. And like I said, I'm, I'm awed as well. It's, it's, it's a mixed feeling. You know, respect and, of course, that fear as well. And I, I thank you for coming. Uh, you know, the, there's a saying that no matter how disenchanted the old soldier is, you will never shy away from the barracks. <laughs> Journalism is a... Uh, I spent almost one third of my life 
one third. How old are you now? I mean, yes, you were born I'm in 66. I'm 68. 68? Yes. So a third of your life was in journalism? More than media practice. I Wow. I actually started my media life with uh, the Ministry of Information. Oh, so that's where but, you cut your teeth in, yeah, in journalism. Sure, and uh, I, I want to pay eloquent uh, tribute mm. to Mr. Kofi Totobi Kwachi. Wow. His wisdom mm. and his foresight and his vision uh, culminated in my serving in the media for all that time. Wow. Uh, Close to 40 years in yes, the media. I mean, um, him, it was him as information minister in the PNDC days who decided to uh, start this project on getting the grad graduates into the media. Mm. And so when we graduated from the university in 1984-85, he decided to use our badge, uh, a number of others, uh, Carl Butchie, uh, 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 Gifty, or oh, I've forgotten the other signing. Right. Yeah. So you, you would like to pay respect and homage to the one and only... Yes. KTQ. Kofi Tutubi Kwachi. Yes. Wow. That was him. I, and I salute him every day. Growing for, up... For his vision and wisdom. Alaji, tell yes. us, growing up, was it always journalism for you? Yes. I believe I had stint uh, of journalism in me because the I have a very inquisitive... Uh, Character, if you put it that way, mm. I, I am not satisfied with just what I see on the surface. I like to pry and find out what is on the surface. Why is it so? And is that all of it? Right. So even since as a child, I had been labeled as a very inquisitive character. And sometimes I, I, got, uh, <laughs> I never got away free. Were you, were you very naughty as well? Uh, the inquisitiveness sometimes can make you uh, <laughs> naughty. Because when, you know, uh, in our time, there were things the elders, sometimes they will not even say it to you. You are doing something, they will just look at you mm. and you melt away. Nobody tells you. But there were certain times even uh, those looks came and you still defied the, the warning and then went ahead to try and pry into other things. Would you, you, know, say, would you say that that helped you? Did that shape you? I think so. I'm, and I, I like to pay tribute to my father. Mm. Uh, may Allah be pleased with his soul. He's no longer on this earth. But uh, you would ap appreciate that you say, no, stop here. But if you make a further inquiry, you see, why do you want to look into this, 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 this? And he may even help you with uh, uh, some of those things you, you try to investigate and find. Right. Uh -huh. And so that inquisitive edge has been with me and also was very argumentative. Oh, you were? Yes. I, 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 I used to argue and talk a lot. So even in my secondary school days, I was nicknamed Akasanuma. <laughs> uh, Is that still your nickname? Yeah, the second, so my, my contemporaries and peers, mm. they know. They still call me. Your nickname is Akasanuma? Yes. Th that is what they used to, not now. <laughs> <laughs> now. Now they call you what? Oh, because you've, you've, you've moved on. Yes. You've taken on some honorable titles. You don't want to be seen to be doubling. In the <laughs> oh, but, 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 but yeah. really, that was the, mm. the, 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 the... I used to argue and talk a lot. How was life back then at Yendi Secondary School? Very lively. Mm. I, what, what is the motto of Yendi? Yendi, Yendi, Yendi is out there, but it's not that popular. Yendi it, Secondary School. Allow me or permit me. But, you know, we but, don't really see you as being vibrant. But we know that we are very popular. Oh, you are? I've always said that there are two schools. Mm -hmm. Yendi Secondary School and, and the address. Yendi. Really? <laughs> so who are some of your mates? Uh, our motto is we learn to serve. We learn to, to serve. serve. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm. So our motto is yes, uh, we learn to serve. Okay. And uh, I can say it is that which has molded our character we the discipline and mm -hmm. the hard work of the the the, the uh, headmaster okay our founder headmaster was mr cba Teview. and the 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 i can say that under his watch you had one of the best tutors wow uh, take it or leave it bola look when the results of especially our badge came the ones were so many you could not believe it and wow. people could not say this is yendi secondary school so you, yes. you you say for a fact that yendi secondary school or senior high school is one of the best secondary schools yes. in Ghana. today as i speak mm -hmm. we have six members of parliament wow from yendi who, secondary who school. attended who yendi attended yendi, Se yendi secondary school interesting six that is members a great of parliament. one yes mm. so i can tell you without any other of doubt 
What kind of that, student were you back then at Yendi Secondary School? Troublesome? Were you calm? Were you? I I I I, I had a number of uh, areas of interest. Mm -hmm. Like I said, already I was talkative. Yes, I, I was inquisitive. Okay, but I was also a, a star footballer. Oh, really? Yes. You used to be a great. Even footballer. when I came to from one. I was diminutive, you know, as I'm not yes. even tall even now, but uh, I, I have a, a, a vertical challenge, you know, and, and, and in those days, even small as I was, mm. there were bigger, bigger boys who were our seniors. When I went to Form 1 in Yeni Secondary School, uh, the, 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 the seniors, the senior most class was in Form 4. We had not even reached Form 5 yet. Oh, uh -huh. there's no Form 5 yet. No. So, so what, O levels, you go to another school and write? No, we, we, I mean, our pioneers, you are, you those okay, who started the school, were, were in Form 4. Form. Okay. So they would enter Form 5 five, when five, I was in Form 2. two. Okay. Uh -huh. So, but they were big guys, you know. Mm. But we went onto the field and I was selected among the first 11 in the school team. Oh, so you played for the school team? Yes. When you were in Form 1? Yeah, because as far back as uh, I remember um, 1969-70, that was the first time they were experimenting with goals mm. on regional le level. I was among the goals team, uh, I was among the team selected to represent the Northern No, no, but you're a star footballer. Yeah, so I was a very good footballer. I was dribble, a dribbler by excellence. Wow. And uh, so from my middle school, they christened me Star Boy. <laughs> in Kalpohem Middle School. Okay. Yeah. Star Boy. Star Boy. Were you, a, were you a ladies man? You seem to be very popular. The ladies liked me, but you know, I, 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 I was petrified of ladies. Oh, really? Yes. You used to you be afraid of ladies. Good friends, yes. Mm. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, you know, when you are popular, yes, ladies like the popular people. That's so right. I'm sure that. Uh, <laughs> oh, so you had your fair share. Oh, like I said, I had friends. They were just platonic friends. Oh, Let me be very right. straight. Mm -hmm. I was not a bad boy in that sense. Oh, okay, okay. So you know, they were just friends. Yes, coming from that, the, the discipline and training mm. they gave us. Sometimes, in fact, that one also petrified us in that direction. So I can tell you that even though they were, we had very good relationship mm. as it was just platonic. No girlfriend. Nothing, no, nothing. not not in that direction. Not in that direction. Uh, at You're least, very focused. Not up to that time. Up to the university, I can tell you. Oh, so you didn't get or take a girlfriend until the university? That classical girlfriend, as you said, in the, until the university. Wow. Yes. So, but I, I think that it was worth it. Very. Because very. it enabled you to concentrate on your academic career mm -hmm. and to do things that you wanted to so do. So you were a great sportsman. Academically, you were a good, sociable person. Then you got to the University of Ghana. Yes. How was it like? Which hall were you in? I was in uh, Legon Hall. Oh, and Legon Hall. Legon Hall, I was in the team of the Legon Hall. Oh, wow. Yes. So, Q Motu Datum, that's your motto. To whom much is given, much, much is expected. expected. Yes. So, you're in Lego Hall. Yes. Where? The next or the premier hall. hall? The main hall. The main hall. I was Which block? S First, S -block. I started at E block. Okay. And then moved to S block. Which I'll is see the S S just right there. Yes. At the protest block. That is the radical, radical, that is radical, radical block. block. S block. <laughs> You uh, transformed it to... I was in S31. Uh, so even Commonwealth, Commonwealth uh, guys with all their noise, they feared as, as block guys. But Lego, Lego Hall, you know... They used to call us guys Abolo and thinking that we are just some very uh, servile, uh, docile people. <laughs> but I can tell you that they, they met more than their match any time... Uh, oh, during your days, in S Lego S Hall really used to write tall. I mean, they, Commonwealth... They will tell that. you that when they are passing on the road there towards... They are uh, yeah. to go and pawn somebody. Even sometimes we take a we are on the S block. So the S blockers were there, like they say. Radicals in the Legon Hall. Really? Yes. During your time. You. Yes, I can tell you with that out. Interesting. Yes, yes, yes. Interesting. Legon Hall. We'll, 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 we'll come to you know that and, and, and get some more. But let's go to the graphic communications group. How did you land that job as a night editor? How do you even get into graphic? So from information, right? I my first. Uh, Stint with active journalism was at Ghanaian Times. Mm. I worked in Ghanaian Times for three years. As? Uh, first as a, a reporter mm -hmm. and later on as an anchor features uh, editor. editor. Uh, so I worked there for three years before I moved to. Uh, I'm sure my exploits, my articles, I used to write profusely on especially international affairs. Uh, and then, of course, I did stories like any other journalist. Right. Even as a, a national service person, I, I, I won some recognition. Uh, even before I, 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 I got through some mention by the GJ. Wow. So you were then, with the Ghanaian Times for three years. Were you poached by Graphic? 
or back then you didn't have anything like being pushed or yanked uh, to another media house yes it was being pushed because uh and let me pay tribute to my 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 former editor mr jana painting he's now nana nana painting nana yes. painting jan painting jana he was then the editor of mirror so it was he who recognized the talents in me and approached me and said look would you want to come mm. and work with us so i said why not we give you a graphic it's a big uh, edition and and not surprisingly i i, I got a, a letter inviting me to an interview right uh, for a position in daily graphic i accepted it went for the interview and uh, i was recruited in 1987. 1987 yes. you joined the graphic communication yes. group yes so you left in 2012 for parliament yes what is the were, were you ruthless were you biased with editing your stories aba for shame yes uh, i've always said it that it is not the longevity of the chief which matters but it's your deeds and in this profession one of the things which should stand a journalist out it's your ability to subsume your emotions attached to any political party or any group and assume the status of a very fair-minded, mm. dispassionate professional. Now, when you put that professional ethic ahead of all other things, I tell you, you go places. Well, you say you are a consummate professional yes. and that you are and very neutral and you didn't take stands when yes. you were the editor, nice yes. editor, and, and graphic. And when I say this thing is a meal, I'm holding it by the balls. <laughs> I'm sure you know Mr. Dambuche. Correct. He was the general secretary of the MPP. MPP. Mm. When I was made the political editor, the first political editor of the graphic in 1994, Even though they read my dispensation to be progressively minded and in line, uh, almost oriented towards the NTC, mm -hmm. one of the people who trusted me most and would give me exclusive, even more than MPP outlets, was Mr. Damboche. Mr. Damboche you used can, to give you exclusives. Exclusives. Although he knew that your political leaders exactly. were told. Because he trusted that I would do a professional job wow. in the day. Wow. Wow. And that in my reportage as political editor for the leading national newspaper, the Daily Graphic, we always came. We hardly had any problem where somebody would come and say you had deliberately gone and distorted facts and painted them in negative lights. Tell, and that tell, the story was not true. Tell us for a fact, A.B. Appreciate, that never at any point did you say, well, this story, yes, I lean towards the NDC, so this will favor the NPP. And I'll shelve it. I'll not do it a, a good job with that, or I'll not even go ahead and publish. See, I've always said it. That Any instance, mm -hmm. you see, if a butterfly thinks it is a bed, it should wait until the wind rises. Mm. If butterfly thinks that it's a bed, yes, it should wait, wait until the wind rises. What will happen? To find its level. <laughs> you know, when there's wind, the butterflies are being carried faster away, but the birds is fly. You see, our media work. The best gratification I can say is when people read your product and they express satisfaction and they, uh, they have the ability to make a dispassionate choice based on what you have put down. And so I always said that it is not just only our writings that can influence people, mm. but the quality of the work that you put out, that even your most uh, uh, dreaded enemy cannot even criticize the work that you have done negatively. So you can still do your work dispassionately and still hold on to whatever position you have. And that's what you Because did. when you sit there, see yourself first and foremost as a professional who has a duty to be fair and balanced to all manner of people. And so when you take that ethic on board, mm. for, for, for the years that I functioned as political editor, never did you run into any the sky. Wow. I can tell you, I was circulation our 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 this and, and everybody would want it to even come for you to interview them the political parties and others and i can tell you your md we, never had a problem with I, you although they knew I, that i, I can tell you that we contributed much to enhancing the stature of the newspaper and 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 and, and driving circulation it was politics and the quality of work that we did the mm. stories that we did to the point that even international we had to go to i had to go to rwanda we went to togo and other yeah, nigeria and many places to cover elections you did all of that all that you know and so 
Bola, I can tell you that uh, it is important to build that mm. image of professionalism. And that is why in our day and age today, I would want to admonish our colleagues mm -hmm. to endeavor. Because in the course of that, this is not only would he, I won many laurels. I was, in fact, uh, the last one was the best investigative journal journalist in Ghana. Wow. In 1995, on the occasion of the 50th anniversary. So, before the, the Manasseh Azuris and uh, Anasa Remeyao Anas, uh, there was ABA Pushin. Oh, I'm sure they, I'm their grandfather. <laughs> 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 and so, even uh, Anas, mm -hmm. some time ago, came uh, to pay tribute to me in Parliament and said, oh, he, as a young man, he took a lot of his in yeah. some of the works that we did, investigative this. And wow. so, when obviously. Uh, uh, he read that I was made journalist of the that year. He went to read the articles that I had written, and he was so impressed. Interesting. And that that gave him a feeling. What are your thoughts of the media landscape as it is now? Do you think that journalists are colored? Journalists have taken the political stance one way or the other, and is affecting the practice. Let me say in the overall assessment that journalists have contributed significantly to enhancing our democratic process, mm. and given the very difficult. Sometimes I will see even dire conditions under which journalists work. Poor salaries, remuneration, no, no uh, tools to work with, you know, and, and worst of all, Bola, mm. to have the looming threat of being pummeled, beaten to pulp, pulp and sometimes killed, maimed for life. Journalists are still braving the odds and performing. I want to salute them. You for, salute for, for Ghanaian journalists. journalists. I do, I do. Uh, if for nothing, like I said, I come from the stables. They mm. say if the mad fish come to say the crocodile has belly ache, you believe him. So I do, but I, I, I still hold the view that we can still do better. Uh, there are some who are not motivated by the calling of the profession. Mm. He's a journalist because maybe there's no job and he wants a uh, standby something to be doing until. He gets it. So there's a tendency for sometimes those uh, uh, temporary situations mm. to influence people to be un unprofessional. unprofessional. So we you throw can, the ethics so away. We can throw the ethics away. Mm. Go and take money. Uh, sorry to say that. Uh, go and get induced, <laughs> and, and 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 you know, you get some facts and others sort of cross checking, which is fundamental to our profession. Cross check and cross check and cross check. Mm give the other side the opinion to be heard, all those kinds of things. So you just throw all these ethics away and go and put the story out there. And that's pathetic. So, 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 mm. you, so you have that, you have some of it now, which I believe the GGA has tried through mm. seminars and others to try and get it. But I think that it's, it also behooves on media houses themselves to endeavor to aim for the top quality. Right. Uh, you, you, you mentioned the GGA, the yes. GGA president and the NMC chairman, they've been in a war of words recently. I mean, in the past week, on the issue of blacklisting politicians who supported assaulted journalists. As a seasoned, retired practitioner, what do you make of these perspectives? I, I find it most, most unfortunate, especially because of the person involved. Really? Mr. Person Mr. 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 Ayobafu, that's what I'm saying. And, and then uh, Kwabla Jumfo, the yes, GDA, Mr. President. GDA president. So, you see, uh, why I, because I've worked with the graphic Mr. Ayabufo, Ayabufo was editor before. I worked under him. Oh, you worked under the NMC chairman, Ayabufo. Yes, yes. As a, he was editor of Graphic. And you are when disappointed, I was, you are disappointed I was, in him? I, uh, I wouldn't say disappointed. But I think there's uh, uh, some choice of words that have not brought out the issue clearly. Hmm. <coughs> I know, for instance, that uh, one of the things he said that has acted many people is that, oh, um, notwithstanding the gravity of the offense, it's, it's, it's also undemocratic to say that we are sidelining somebody and not going to give you publicity. Don't you think so? Um, I believe he's gone to the stream. He killed a mosquito with a sledgehammer. What I want to say is that he may be right that in a democratic process, everybody has a right to be heard. Everybody has a right to be heard. Mm -hmm. And on that score, if you just looked at it simpliciter, uh, you, you have taken away somebody's right. Uh, you, 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 you will not get it right. What, you see, if you are suffering in hell, blame death. If you are suffering in hell? Blame death. If you don't die, will you go there in the first place? 
you see, Bula, yes, what is the infraction here? Somebody has recruited people to beat up a journalist. No democratic system can tolerate this kind of abrasion, this kind of pervert behavior. Even, even you cannot beat up even any, any, any other citizen, let alone a journalist in the course of the performance of his duties, his or her duties. You cannot. So, I've heard that, yes, uh, like uh, Mr. Ayabofu has as chairperson of the media commission, he has, he, has, he, has been, he has handled a lot of these issues. And he's always sided with the journalist because that is where he should be. But in this particular matter, you cannot say that the person who created that problem and got the journalist beaten up must still retain the full complement of his uh, 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 rights to the media. Because if he appreciated that media in the first case, he will not even arrange for people to go and beat up that journalist. So, 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 so they support the blacklist so, of... Yeah, so there ought to be some sanction mm -hmm. that will send a message to people that it does not pay for you to attack them. And that if you do, mm. these are the exactly. possible repercussions. So I think that... So you think that the GJ is right and they are fair? I think that the GJ is right. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it is supposed to be for the deterrence effect. Mm. To make sure that others sitting by who contemplate embarking on such uh, 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 criminal actions who desist from that, especially politicians, the media is the oxygen for politicians. So if you take that oxygen away, the politician is like working in the dark. Nobody will know what he's doing. And so if you are conscious that no matter how aggrieved you are, and as politicians, we are the first to be aware that there are channels open to us mm. to resolve those grievances. So why do we go to the extreme? Our journalists want to be some journalists. Respected so in this I am not by any stretch, let mm. me also say that, okay. saying that there should be irresponsible journalism. Yeah. I, 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 I totally condemn that. And even with that irresponsible journalism, there's also a way for tackling it. But the way is not through brutal, the use of brute force. Mm. It doesn't solve that problem. And that is why I'm, I, am, I am in this particular matter. I am appealing to my, my senior. Because, uh, like I said, Mr. Buedu Ayabuafu was, yeah. was my editor at the Daily Graphic. I had immense respect for him, for his civility, and for his very, uh, 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 he's a very fair-minded fair person. And I, 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 I think that he, he, he paid his dues mm. so well to the media fraternity. But I think on this on particular this score, uh, he's maybe overstretched the argument a bit. And I would appeal that, that, that not only for a ceasefire, but I think that uh, that uh, uh, confrontation mm -hmm. between the GJA and the NMC is not healthy for our media practice. I think that we should uh, uh, enter a ceasefire, sit down, and I think uh, resolve this matter. There are just differences of opinions mm -hmm. on what the sanction ought to be. Uh -huh. So I, I think that it is... Uh, from, from where you sit and what you've done, can a journalist work and live on his or her career earnings towards decent retirement? We've, we, we've had issues where people say, well, you get into the media or journalism, many retire broke, destitute. I, I, I ask this because many, yes, they use the media and then transition into law, politics, like you've done. Yeah. Uh, like I've said, is over here, media practice, if you really want to live a very comfortable life decently, mm. you, cannot, you cannot subsist on the media. You must have like I've on said, the side. Yeah. yeah, because like I've said, the, the remuneration and conditions of service of journalists in this country, in many instances, is not much to write home about. Mm. And so that is why, uh, in some respects, solely, yeah. Uh, 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 has been used as a supplement. And, and, and it is one thing I okay. want to ask you. Do you think that giving Soli is right? Yes, like we know in general, they only say thank you. You go and cover, or you, you go for an assignment, or you cover a program, and you're, at the end of the day, you're giving something for maybe transportation, or do you believe in Soli? And in music, they call it payola. Mm. Play or pay to play. Yes. Uh, you see, Soli, Bola. Yes, sir. You must have head before you can chew corn. <laughs> in, 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 in a society such as ours, yes. 
if you make that comparison with developed countries, mm. Star you'll be making FM. a very grievous error. Um, because you see, in, 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 in those societies, journalists, their take home pay, their conditions of service, and others mm. can let them afford a decent life. Just like any other things. And you go to those countries, journalists are well paid. Mm. In fact, among the best paid. So you believe that so, our economy and because we are a developing country. Exactly. It, 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 it exposes. Isn't that the case that it also lead to corruption then? Because oh. then people will skew or they will tilt towards. You, you, you know what yes, I'm saying. Yes, I, I, that, that is exactly what I'm saying. Mm. I am by no stretch of logic saying that it's justifiable to take solid. But the circumstance. In fact, to demand solely, because <laughs> in, in some instances, solely is not where the person has appreciated your work mm. after you've done the work and gives you some. It's different from even demanding it as a precondition for oh, so some general for, demand. Yes, Star people are publish your story. Wow. So, so if that, if that is, if that, that, that goes to the other extreme. But in our context here, like I said, um, uh, I will not be too harsh on somebody who has done a fair job. Mm has done a decent job. And you want to show up. And then somebody says, oh, you did a very good job. I appreciate what you have done. So where do you so then I, draw the line that is an appreciation? This is uh, you being influenced. This is you being... But how do you, as a journalist, draw you, the line? Do you take it before you write the story or you write the story and go and take it? <laughs> so, Bula, and then what is, is, the, motive? The, situation, what is eh? the motive mm. for taking because if somebody comes and says, Bola, mm -hmm. oh, I admire the way you, you carried out this interview. Right. You are talking to me now. That's right. I said, I'm so happy about the way you carried so out. So after this so, interview, so Bola, you give me... Bola, take uh -huh. this one and drink one. $100,000. That cannot be a corrupt act. Really? Why? But I'm doing my job. I yeah, shouldn't... I, I said, I'm just saying that. Mm -hmm. It's just an appreciation the person is showing for a, a good job. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with making a demand that, look, Ask these questions of the person and don't be harsh on him and treat him this way. Yeah, but so Raji, we, we, we are also quick then to go and accuse the politician when the politician is doing something for you know maybe he's also doing a job. I mean his job or so, her job. So that is why I he's that. a minister. He's done something for somebody and the person comes. Oh, this uh, you know thirty thousand dollars, and then we'll go out there as journalists and we'll criticize the minister. Meanwhile, in our profession, we say he's right because he's showing up. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying that. The government have been saying that don't hold me for me to use my strength to wrench off. You see, if it doesn't happen, the better for our society and for all of us. But I am just, I am just trying to fathom even in the worst of scenarios. Right. When you are caught up in this conflict, this one is better than this one. <laughs> you are not looking at <laughs> fine. Maybe you are looking at shades of corruption. If you want to say shades, so, 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 yes. shades so, of corruption. So, of course, you can say that. Because then you have uh, shades of corruption, then you have shades of sin. When they count, huh? when they count sin first, say Satan has no equal. <laughs> so what I want to say is that the 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 issue should be what is your mind, what is your objective. Mm. That's why lawyers, before they can see a criminal conviction conviction, mm. they look at your mindset, mens rea, right. and actus reus, the, the 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 act itself. So there should be a coincidence between what you is your mind to mm. commit that act and the actual act. Have you ever taken solely in your practice as a journalist? Did you ever take solely? If I said no, I'll be a liar. Oh, so you've, you've taken but solely. not solely. Uh, let me explain this very <laughs> no, well. But yes or no? Did you ever that, take that solely? is why I said that if I said I, I never took, mm. I'll yeah, be lying. Mm. So it means I took. <laughs> but let me tell you, let me tell you the, the circumstance. The circumstance. Okay. Bola, I told you for instance that. Star I did a lot of investigative FM. reports. And to be honest with you, if it was that money I wanted, those I investigated, especially in the year that I won the best investigative journalist of, the story? Yeah. Of, of Ghana, I did some investigative reports at Kolibutichi Hospital. I went underground where they were using expired switches and others. And uh, uh, Konev with some drug companies to sell substandard disease that they were using to treat patients. And in fact, when they got wind of it, they wanted to bribe you. Bola, if I had liked just to take that money, I would have taken that money. They offered how much? Bola, 
that money at that time was huge. Wow. I just want to indicate to you that mm -hmm. for my for my for my my my, my stature at that time and that it would have landed me a comfortable life. You, you could I could have, have bought a house. Those days I could have bought a car, I could have bought those things that you really? are bit, yes. A lot, lot of money that they offered you. A lot of money. But, but you didn't. I didn't I didn't take it. Wow. But I just want to indicate to you. And that's why I'm talking about that corruption. Mm -hmm. So if you if you if you for instance decline this money mm -hmm. and you go ahead and do your job. And somebody sitting somewhere says, oh, this is a very good job yes, that is done. Mm. And, and, and comes over. Are, are you so, so, so? I'm very happy about what you have done, ABCD. Okay. So, Bola, yeah. I'm, sure, the, I'm yes, sure human as you are, you can make yeah, that distinction that's right. clearly. So, mm. it's different from even uh, 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 somebody offering you. And even worse, when you go and demand mm. that before I even do this story or this, please bring this quantum of money. Have you heard of journalists? And media people taking monies and then they, they, they have a term or a phrase i'll kill the story yes people kill stories in news news oh they do yeah depending on how, what how much authority you have wow uh, if maybe um you you, you may decide not to as a journalist go and decide not to write the story mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. have killed the story. You were the night editor. Did, did people approach you or maybe you have your journalists or reporters coming to you and say, Chief, as for this story, we, we don't have to publish it. There are, there are many interesting things in the, in the newsroom. Wow. I can tell you that sometimes uh, uh, you, you, just, you, just, you just have to do your work as a professional, mm. but uh, 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 wink on one or two other things. Because... Um, a story can come and you just know that look reading the story you just know that this is a solid lady story <laughs> right you can tell a rap con by its look so just reading it bola you can tell that this is a solid lady look. so you just tell the reporter quietly mm -hmm. my brother this one go and do some more decent work on it and come back you understand so uh yes i was and in in, in graphic as that editor they will tell you uh, uh, under my watch, Star we did a very professional FM. job that enhanced the stature of the newspaper. It was not for nothing that graphic was circulating over hundred thousand copies and, 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 and over in those times. Do, do, do you now, from where you sit as well? I was reading a report today, and newspaper circulation has gone down, not just Ghana but worldwide yes. because of digital media, yeah, sure. because of social media. We're in a different era. You, you believe that there will come a time when newspapers will, will, will just fade out? And Do you see that coming? The possibility is there, but I, I still think that there are still some people who still would want to read hard copies, newspapers, of, mm. hard copies of newspapers. Okay. I know that as the sophistication goes on and the generations come, maybe uh, there's a, a, a threat that it may fizzle out. Yeah, uh, with the new media we, are, we have, we right. have a border. But I still think that there will still be a few people around who still would want to uh, fancy newspapers around and use them as the means of uh, uh, if, uh, getting their information. FM. Interested. We'll, we'll come and talk about life in politics and all of that, but now we're staying with your work. You mentioned being a night editor, working late nights. What habits did you pick up that you regret? You, you wish you, 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 you had overcome that? Yeah. Um, one of it is uh, I actually nearly got diabetic. Um, and, and even to this day, when mm -hmm. you have even some small sugar issues, right, uh, you can trace it back to those days. When you used to be a night editor, yes, because, while you were see, checking in. Mm -hmm. Because you worked throughout. There, are, there were times you had to go home around 1, 2 a.m. And uh, I'll tell you a story. There was one time, and uh, may, may, the, may the Lord take him in his bosom, uh, Brother Atakwesi. He was my colleague at Daily Graphic. And he was a deputy editor. Mm. And uh, I was the ninth editor. But we were, we jailed. He was one of my best friends in graphic. So sometimes around 9 30, 10 p.m., we would go to Odoko. There was a woman. Who used to do tilapia and banku? 9.30 p.m. 9.30 p.m. We're eating tilapia and banku. We'll, we'll go there, we'll buy, we'll come around 10.30. 10, 10 and then we thought it was very good living. And not only good living, but um, something which accord us well to do our work. So one day, we were, we were eating as usual, the same day, and, and then 
this paperback drinks, you know, this uh, Don Simon, That's those, right. those yeah. were the things. Mm -hmm. Then a medical doctor friend of mine walked in, said he was just passing by and he, he saw our car, so he thought that we were sitting there, so he just came in. So as soon as he walked in, he said, hey, what are you guys doing? I said, ah, but Star you can see that, you can see what we are doing, you can see that we are eating. I said, what are you doing to yourselves? I said, ah, but we are eating. Mm -hmm. I said, no, you are killing yourselves. I asked, why? He said, look, this thing that you are eating, in about two, three hours, when you finish and you go home to rest, that food not digest properly. Even if it digests, mm. the body cannot absorb that energy, mm. the sugar that it converts into sugar. That sugar, you are not going to use it for anything. Mm. You come tomorrow, repeat it. The next day, the next day, the next day. So it's not about the food, it's the time of day of eating it. The time of the day of eating it. Okay. And the food itself. Ah, banku. But you know, banku is carbohydrate, mostly. Right. Right. So if they analyze it for you and you have the mm. propensity or susceptibility to have some sugar problems, mm. your, oh, your, spike. Your, 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 your spike, you get a spike. So you don't eat banku? Oh. Uh, moderately. <laughs> <laughs> because they will tell you that, it, you see, it's not as if don't eat, mm. but how much of it you eat. Right. You know, but you, the banku that I was talking to you, it was really banku with oh. tilapia. So it's, it's good that we're picking such thoughts so that exactly. the younger ones can exactly. up and all of so, that. So mm -hmm. the, at the time that you eat mm -hmm. and what you eat, eat and right. the quantity of what you eat. Mm. And I can tell you many journalists either get, uh, uh, what do you call it? They, they don't eat, you don't find time to eat and you get this. Uh, ulcer. Ulcer. Ah, because you don't, ulcer, the you don't find time to eat or yeah. when you want to go and eat again, you commit another thing and have sugar problems. Wow. So it is something that I think that it is important in our newsroom mm -hmm. okay. for us. Because when the pressure comes, mm -hmm. you can't find time to eat it. Because it, the paper it, has to go to bed. A journalist should make time for themselves. They're out there. Exactly. The news. Yeah. Health is wealth. Yes. Because like I said, you must have heard before you can chew corn. Mm. If you are not alive, can you be a, 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 an editor or a sub-editor or whatever That's right. in the newsroom? You cannot. Mm. So it is important, first and foremost, to prioritize health, your health. We'll, your be, going, we'll be going for a short break, but be, be, before that, let, let, let's talk about your family. You're married with how many children? I have four children. Four? Only four. Oh, only four. <laughs> you, wish, you wish you had more? Oh, uh, in this era of escalating school fees, and others, I think it's okay. And uh, you just take it that that is what Allah Almighty says you can. Have. One wife? One wife. Right. Uh, so you are practicing Muslim? I'm or? a practicing Muslim. Okay. Very devout Muslim. Very devout Muslim. Yes. So you have the choice. But, but you it can doesn't. Marry it, that, yes. Four. You can marry up to four. Okay. But you've uh, decided to. But have I one. don't want my wife to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you have the desire. <laughs> no, I'm saying that oh, at my age, mm. I'm sure that. Uh, but you made a choice. I'll be all right. <laughs> you believe in one man, one wife? Oh, as a Muslim, mm. the religion and that uh, as, uh, uh, opens up the opportunity for you to have up to four. Up to four, right. Yeah, but it, it, it's a function of each individual's, uh, your preference, your yeah. makeup, mm. your, your view of what you want things to be. It never crossed your mind that, yes, my religion allows me to have four wives, but I want to have one. Never did any point. Because sometimes, you, mm -hmm. you know, your wife can handle you in such a manner that at a certain point, she becomes like your sister. Ah. So uh, it's, it's, it, you look at her and I said, Don't want to add on. This one, yeah. the harmony that you have, let's, let's maintain it yeah. and go along. Wow. Because yeah. let me say it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we men are selfish and we, we, we think it is the problem of the women. That women are those who don't like rivals. I just want to ask any man who, when he's going anywhere with his wife or girlfriend or something, and somebody calls, yeah, I say, oh, yeah, this, it comes to you, I say, oh, but this girl is my girl, and how will you react? So in that, in that vein, even men are worse. <laughs> it says that they are not worse. You throw punches. Mm. Or you have even had some people where they, they even fire shots. Okay? Right. But... When it comes to women, you expect them to take it. And we quietly. Say, always say that oh, women are jealous and all. Exactly. Of, if the table should turn and the woman says, "I have three men," and all of uh, can you take it? 
<laughs> Can you take it? <laughs> <laughs> so, Bola, you see where yes. the, 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 if the shoe is on the other foot, mm -hmm. it's a piece of wood. <laughs> the, it doesn't pay. The anti-gay bill in parliament, are, are yes. you in support of it or are you certain that the president will assent to it when it's passed? What, what is your position? Let me say that I'm exiting, ex exiting parliament. Yes. And this is the one of the most happiest moments for me that you are exiting at a time where you are contributing to something that for us and I just told you I'm a Muslim. Mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the universe, created man and woman for the purposes of procreating and continuing life. And we Muslims say that Allah Almighty created us not to do anything. God doesn't need anything from you, but to worship him. Mm. You can only do it when there's continuous procreation. Bula, if you were to lock me and you in a room, mm -hmm. For 100 years, right. assuming we will get to 100 years, right. can we procreate? Is that possible? Certainly not. So I've heard some people say, if you can't procreate, you can adopt. Who will bring forth for you to go and adopt? If we all imbibe that culture, mm. that I see it as a perverse culture, who will, who will bring forth for you to go and adopt? FM. So honestly, I make a clear decision that all human beings are entitled to fundamental human rights. All human beings. Mm. But not all actions are in tandem with the fundamental human rights that we are talking about. So there's what I call a lifestyle. That practice is a lifestyle. And let me confirm that the European Court of Human Rights has upheld that it is not uh, 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 part of the fundamental human, human rights, rights that we are talking about. So, so it's not a right, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Today, today, if somebody says, if he says he wants to stop, he can stop. Oh, really? Yes. People are saying that also, you know. You have heard stories of sometimes some yeah. uh, ladies who are lesbians, mm -hmm. and after some time they stop and, can, and come and have normal life and, 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 and bring forth and continue life. So how is that? That tells you that it's a lifestyle. So you are championing that it should. Yeah, because you see, our society does not accept it. Bula. But they're saying that embrace such people, love them. I mean, reach out to them. So if your son should come to you, I mean, yes, the other side it says, this is what, how would you react then? And you say you are going to come Bula, to, yeah. Allah forbid. Allah forbid. May Allah Almighty never test me that way. Because I don't know how I react. You don't know? Yes. But I, you express I, I, love. That's your son. That's yes. your daughter. Yes. So you just have to embrace them and maybe counsel them and talk to them. That's okay. They, That's okay. Mm. Yeah, but love like any other thing. As a limit. There's nothing which is limitless. And so there are certain red lines. Bola, that Sh should not should, be shouldn't we tolerate them? Shouldn't we show yeah, them so, love? So I'm shouldn't just, we counsel them rather than saying that? Bola, that's what I'm saying. That as, I'm or first, as human beings, mm -hmm. they are entitled to a fundamental human rights like any of us. But we are talking about a practice that is not only alien to our culture, but undermines human civilization. As we, we all became gay, gay, gays and lesbians. Bola. Mm. You don't think in a few years the world will come to an end? Because there will be no procreation. There will be no basis for any civilized life that we are all living today. And so for us as Africans in our culture in Ghana here, it's the our values and our culture don't accept, accept those that. practices. Mm. So, as representatives of the people, we have a bounding duty to reflect. And you call on the all values of our people, all parliamentarians, to do so. Yes, I'm, I'm sure that I, I want to tell you that though the 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 we are today we, we are supposed to have entered the third reading. Yes, the right. Final and, reading and it was stopped by uh, yes. The, yeah, but I'm sure that in the next day or two, it will we, be, we'll get there. But I just want to say that. I will shudder to think that there they can be when the vote is put. Mr. Speaker said he wants to record the votes. So you get up and they say, ABF, Sanaru, what is your vote? Star I doubt whether any MP can get up there and oppose. Really? You are saying on authority that no MP will have the courage to, just to get up and say that he's voting against the bill. And that's what is going to happen because you're going to stand up. Sure. For Bola, why? It's because you know that going back home as a member of parliament, 
After voting for them, there is you permanent exile in Accra and make sure that we are no longer going for the city. <laughs> On that note, we'll go for a short break. When we come back, we'll talk about your political life, life in parliament, and a lot more right here on Star Chat. ABA Fusheni is our guest here on Star Chat. Refreshing you with the best music, news, and more. Star 103.5. Simply the best. The other day, I visited Kweku at his spunky new office to congratulate him on opening his business. And man, was I impressed. The business is just moving quick. The sales, customers, everything is just working seamlessly. The secret? Hmm. He said, it's empty and business broadband. In this fast-paced environment, we need fast and reliable internet to support all business types. No laggy online meetings, great download and upload speeds, impeccable business management systems, all inclusive. I mean, you can have it all. So, I signed on immediately. <laughs> to enable your business stay ahead and stay connected, make sure you're signed on to the best internet made just for businesses. MTN Business Broadband. Sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh and manage your account on my MTN app. Call 0244-308-111 for more information. We are good together everywhere you go. Hello, Linda. You won't believe what I am planning next. I want to start my postgraduate degree, buy a car, and build my dream home. But you know what's stopping me? What's that, Mike? Money, yo. That'd be my biggest wahala. Oh, you are sort of cry. With a GCB Big Move personal loan promo, you can borrow up to a whopping 400,000 Ghana CDs at a significantly reduced interest rate in less than 24 hours. Like, seriously? How do I qualify? Yes, it's available to all GCB salary account holders. Plus, you get a two-month grace period before you start to pay back. Suskit, I'm opening an account with GCB no, no, no. Get a personal loan of up to 400,000 Ghana cities at a significantly reduced interest rate in less than 24 hours. Call 0800-422-422 or visit your nearest GCB branch today to fund your next big move as we celebrate 70 years of greatness. T's and C's apply. GCB Bank, your bank for life. Tell him, see a man is still no here. What that all for me there is? Calm down. I'm sure you'll be here soon. Oh, guys, 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 sorry I'm late. Could you bab me for road? Sick of my insurance expire. Some long <laughs> issue, Charlie. Ah, <laughs> chairman, <laughs> pal. Hey, you make Koti bab you sick of you forget to renew your car insurance when you can get your car insurance sticker instantly on Aptel. And best of all, you can set a reminder to renew. Simple matter. Just install the app, enter your car number, and... La la, your instant insurance sticker is there. I been... Oh, really? Make a do am now before I forget. But, and the move, 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 insurance sticker need the move one time. I can even renew it every month. Wow. Charlie, 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 as for this one, today, as usual, the sitting is on me. Visit hoptel.com slash app to download your hoptel app and set a reminder to renew your car insurance today. Hoptel is everything you. It's portable, disposable, and always on hand when you need it. Flora Disposable Handkerchief fits in your pocket or bag, and it's always ready to come to the rescue. Sweat? No problem. Coughs and colds? Caught safely. Tears of joy or despair? Wiped away. Flora tissues in the form of disposable handkerchiefs, box tissue, toilet roll, multi-purpose towels and table napkins plays an important role in personal, home, school, office and commercial hygiene, minimizing the spread of infections and keeping us healthy. Flora tissues are made with premium tissue paper, so choose Flora tissues. To be a distributor, call 0243-033-033. The other day, I visited Kweku at his spunky new office to congratulate him on opening his business. And man, was I impressed. The business is just moving quick. The sales, customers, everything is just working seamlessly. The secret? Hmm. 
He said, it's empty and business broadband. In this fast-paced environment, we need fast and reliable internet to support all business types. No laggy online meetings, great download and upload speeds, impeccable business management systems, all inclusive. I mean, you can have it all. Shout! I signed on immediately. <laughs> to enable your business stay ahead and stay connected, make sure you're signed on to the best internet made just for businesses. MTN Business Broadband. Sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh and manage your account on my MTN app. Call 244 308 111 for more information. We are good together everywhere you go. Ball array. Ball array. Ball array. Bull, 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 bullets. Ball array. Hit me. And it's just a minute shy of eight right here on Star Chat. My name is Bolare, and you're most welcome. ABA Fushene is our guest, the honorable member for parliament for Sanarugu. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it and talk about your constituency and life in parliament. But a big thank you to our proud sponsors, MTN, MTN everywhere you go to Haptel. We're saying a very big thank you. <coughs> and of course, going out to Co-op Plus Mixture, thank you. And to GCB Bank, your bank for life. Well, did you know that MTN Momo now has an app? Yes, MTN Momo has a brand new app specially designed to make your Momo experience easier, convenient, and faster. Just download the Momo app on Play Store or App Store on your smartphone and look out for the blue and yellow icon. It's that simple. Momo app allows you to view your statements, pay bills, and so much more. So go on, download the Momo app now and start transacting with a flex and no data cost. Just Momo it everywhere you go. And also a big thank you to Haptel. Sometimes buying your car insurance isn't the problem. It is when you forget to renew it and then you get into trouble with the police or an accident. Instant car insurance is now on Haptel. So get your instant car insurance sticker anytime. No long things. Just install the Haptel app. You can also set a reminder for your next renewal date. Haptel is everything you. Welcome back, ABA Fushini. Thank you very much. And we have lots of messages for you as well. So well, as we go ahead, we'll, we'll get into it. But um, Abna from Hacho wants to know from me, why did he quit journalism and uh, walked into politics? Yeah, uh, Bula, I think it's a very long story. Mm. Summarize it for us. Yeah. Um, the long and short of it is uh, I've always been a political animal. But uh, somewhere... In 2004, mm. uh, I was at work one afternoon when um, I think about uh, three bus loads of youth from uh, the north came and they were causing a lot of, uh, they were drumming, dancing, singing at graphic. At graphic? At graphic. They came from the northern region? To graphic. To graphic? Yes, yes. In 2004? And 2004. And uh, their, their addition was that. In fact, when I was, yes, I was still in the office, my, my, they came to, the security came to report to my boss that uh, they came, they were, people are there, they are dancing, they are singing, and calling my name and say they want to come and see me. So the security uh, asked them to hold on. They came to see the editor. And the editor called me to his office and said, ah, why, they say your people are outside here. Maybe they want to make you chief or what. And I said, oh, my area... And for our chief tenancy there, you have to go and lobby and spend money to get it to. And like you sadness, who they come and arrest freely as chiefs. We, you have to go and pay money. So mm. I have not even sought any chief tenancy title. If I have did, I would have gone to uh, lobby for it and pay for it. So I came out. Lo and behold, these young men were there. They had come to ask me that they wanted me to come and contest the Tamale North seat on the ticket of the NDC. And at that time, my brother... My senior brother, may Allah be pleased with his soul, Honorable Abu Karismani, was the, a member of parliament for that area. So I came out, met them, I thanked them very much for reposing that level of confidence in me. You know, but I said I was sorry to disappoint them because uh, the way we were brought up, you cannot enter into a contest with your senior brother. And that Honorable Abu Karismani was my senior brother, so there was no way I was going to contest. You can see some got very angry and said some unprintable words. But in the end, you know, I managed to explain to them they understood. So those edges had come, you know. But, uh, Bula, the long short of it is that there were a series of events that 
uh, 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 culminated in the creation of the Sanaro Consuasi, of which I played a role. I'm sure some other day will have the opportunity to look at it. Right. Uh -huh. And so, um, when that Consuasi was created, uh, under the aegis of His Excellency President Mills, may Allah be pleased, may the good Lord have him in his bosom, it was a good people of Sanaro who said, look, this one, we cannot... The time is it. now. The time is now. The constituency is here. And so, Bula, it was they who signaled the end of the, the beginning of the and, race. And you did all the campaign. It was just the right time for you to get into politics, yeah. active politics. And so, uh, Bula, if they squeeze honey in your mouth, the only thing you can do is solve it. You can't spit it out. <laughs> and you went for it. Well, let, let's talk about what you've done. I mean, in your constituency as well, just as they love you, some also, they love you. I mean, I've heard comments that, oh, you, you, instead of you serving them, you've served them with proverbs more than, you know, developments. Is that true? Is that how you feel? Uh, first and foremost, let me tackle that one you said. The, the day everybody loves you, mm -hmm. you'll be a lunatic on the street. The day everybody loves you, yes, you'll be a lunatic or a madman on the street. Mm. There's no human being on the surface of this earth. Maybe God has not yet created that person who commands the love of everybody. Mm. It is not possible. That is deep. Jesus Christ of blessed memory. Our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. God created them special. But look at what they went through. Hated by many. Okay? So if these are even exalted persons in the eyes of God, Allah Almighty, what about we, the useless, bankrupt ones? So let me say up in this show, I will have never pretended and have never sought to let everybody like me. Because I, I'm, I'm conscious of the fact that the day everybody likes you, you be a madman on the street. But Bula, let me say without any attack, and I'm putting this as a matter of record here, Yes, maybe I'm very proud that I am uh, an ambassador for the uh, people of Dagbon in their culture, in their proverbs and others. Mm. It, 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 it's, a, it's an ample testimony to the, the, the brilliance of Dagbonverse as a people. But, Bula, I have said something and I put it as a challenge and I want you to note it down okay. and, and investigate. Mm -hmm. There is no constituency in this country and I'm not saying in my region. In this country. In this country. And I want you to take it note down. That in one year, they have done electrification for communities numbering over 24 in that community. In one single year. And that is you, ABA. For when sure. I was a member of parliament, mm -hmm. in fact, before I became a member of parliament, for Sadar, when I was elected the candidate, and I had been going to Sadar, so I was aware. But we went around. About 25, 24, 25 communities had no electricity. Since the beginning of time, light has never shone in their area. Bola, within the first year in 2013, they had commenced electrification in all the 24. Simultaneously, it hasn't happened anywhere. It's a secret that I have. Wow. In connection with my closeness with Excellency President John Dramani Mahama. Hmm. You and moved so, for that to happen. And that's what I'm saying. All of them, and the, my, 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 my constituents will be listening. They can call and tell, tell you that by my second year, I had completed electrification in the Sanaro constituency. Okay? The last one was one village called Batangile. That one, we had even managed to send the high tension. They had done all the, the wiring and others when we exited power in 2016. Bola, we had sent water portable water mm. to communities about 32 communities in the Sanaro constituency they are listening they can tell you bola i have built six four three classroom blocks six four three classroom blocks wow. six classroom blocks with ancillary facilities four classroom blocks with office and science listen in, in my constituency bola they number more than 20 in my constituency Sanaro. there were children who were walking to school five Kilometers or more. Mm. When I became a member of parliament, they were attending school in their villages. Bola, for the first time in the history of our areas, I procured computers 
and they were teaching village our, 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 our brothers and sisters and our children in the villages they were teaching that in, in their in their in their villages unprecedented in the annals of you did all of this but you Bola. lost your real Bola, I'm <laughs> mm. yes Bola, when the bandicoot is out of his hole in the daytime something has happened inside mm. Bola, i have uh, 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 done clinics in fact there's a place called Mashao in my constituency women used to gather under a tree for the nurses to come and attend to them really yes when i became member of parliament i built a clinic at that place then all the areas catchment in not only in my constituency in the neighboring kumbungu constituency and tolong they were all coming from there and the numbers got so huge that the Mashao chief came and appealed to me mp you have done us something very good but the the population is said that many of the women come they cannot see and the nurses go back home so if you can get us a nurses quarters where the nurses can stay here and give them maternity services you built it i built it for them and we have three nurses staying there and rendering services all of this the people rejected you honorable why and so i can tell you look i yeah. can i can I we can. know you can go on and on and on so, but so, why so what what did they tell why so do first and foremost mm. I have taken it that as a Muslim, everything has an expiry date. Even a stone will expire. Have you expired? No, I'm, 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 I'm talking okay. of, in terms of okay. parliament and other things. Okay. So first of all, I have taken that the three terms Allah Almighty has given me is what he has given me. Okay. But Bola, I want you today to go to the constituency today. Mm. We'll get our reporters there. Yes. So get our reporters to go to the constituency. And go into the people and ask them what opinion do they have of me today? Wow. So they and, regret and, it not and get, and get a percentage. So, mm -hmm. so, so that's why I say, ever since that this is, I have refrained from commenting. Today you have the chance. Tell us about no, I'm that. Just, I'm and just, how you feel. I have just taken it that my time was due. Okay. As a member of parliament and the people. Do you think they've lost the but good see, man? Yeah. In our politics, sometimes. I've been saying it. You don't realize the importance of your buttocks until there's a boil on it. But like when you just come and the seat is there, say mm -hmm. you just sit. But when there's a boil, you calculate, isn't it? That's right. So when you are there, sometimes human nature, your 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 importance and others is taken for granted until you move. move. You say familiarity breeds contempt. Content. Right. You understand? Uh -huh. So without any item of doubt. Bula, the work I have done together with the, the NDC in the Sanaru constituency made the, 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 the constituency uh, 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 a no-go area for the new patriotic party. We never win below 75%. In fact, in the first uh, 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 year, 2012, when the mm. constituency was created, I got about 80%. President Mama got about 82, get it to 83%. Would you not in the, in the, 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 the person who is in there, you believe that he can also change the fortunes and push it further? I, I, I just think that whatever, that seat mm. is an NDC seat. It's an NDC seat. Will you support him? Will you rally fact, I just, and campaign I, I just, for him? I just came back mm -hmm. with President Mama who were in the constituency just over a week ago. All oh, right. And you should come and see the enthusiasm and the campaign that we launched right. in that area with the, the target of 90 percent so the, that's it that's it's it. an ndc seat that's seriously you say i told the mpp mm -hmm. that that seat for mpp to win that seat it will be easier for a, a fish that has been caught smoked dried uh -huh. and in the stall for sale to walk back to the sea than for the mpp to claim that seat hey honorable you are sure of this this is Loaded. I'm telling you, it will be difficult for us. I, I told you that that has been caught. Yes, smoke. Yes, dried. Mm -hmm. Eh? Uh -huh. And in the store, ready for sale. To walk back to the sea <laughs> and swim and swim back to the sea. <laughs> that for the MPP to win the Sanarbu seat and 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 ultimately in the presidential election, we are aiming to give President John Dramani Mahama 90 percent of the vote in the I tell you, by the grace of Allah, this is attainable. And you I just told you that we yeah. had closer to 83 percent before okay mm. i am sure that if we did some more work and that is what we want to do because we want president mama to win one touch and and and, and there will be no iota of doubt 22 and, and, and president mama is winning hands down oh my brother 
what is it like up north? I mean, you just got back from what? What is it? What does it feel like? You feel that the NDC is going to sweep a lot of seats there oh, because the, I, I, I can tell the, you the presidential candidate of the MPP I, is also. I, I, I can tell north. you by the grace of Almighty Allah, mm. we shall win some more seats. The NDC will win more seats in inshallah, the north. Inshallah, inshallah, this inshallah. year, yes, inshallah. interesting. But for the presidential election, take it that President Mahama, his vote will appreciate in the in, in, in the northern region. Speaking from a constituency, that's why I'm saying that the target is 90% of the vote. Uh, uh, already, a lot of the MP people have decamped and they are, they, are, they, are, they are with us. Have they? Oh, I'm sure not too long ago, you saw some letters that were written by MPP sacking some of their organizers. Uh -huh. They are already with us on the ground working. They've joined the because MPP. They, are, they have seen that the MPP government and Nana Kufadu and Dr. Baumia are hopelessly uninspiring. The first deputy speaker and the outgoing MP for Bekwai joe or Sewusu, yes has this week indicated that mps have become community atms and having to face unrealistic demands yes have you also suffered same no i'm sure it's an it's an apt summary mm. because the unfortunately for our politics and maybe uh, also partly attributable to how maybe some of us have also conducted ourselves when you are going to look for the position okay because uh, bola there are people when they uh, 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 are seeking to campaign for the parliamentary they make this in, they can promise anything under the sun they will tell you that they can transform your fortunes overnight they can turn your nights into day they can turn your misery into profuse laughter uh, and so and so the, the, some of the people naturally come to believe that it's possible for the MP to do anything and so today in our political uh, dispensation now the MP is started with everything and anything mm. somebody's wife is pregnant he will inform you mp uh, hopefully in the next week or two you should prepare my wife will deliver wow. and when that delivery comes in fact when the woman is labor they will inform you that the wife has delivered and so you should start preparing then they will start naming the items oh they do that so many things so many things happen they're happy this one so if he says this one it's true it's true there's no doubt about it that mps mm undergo a lot, lot of, of uh, demands wow. from from constituents and like i said part of it is also because the way um, uh, 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 aspirants when they are we promise guarding for the thing go for it but generally now the perception is that the mp is the one they vote for they don't know the president right okay yeah. even though you work for the president is the mp who is the face in the constituency who works for the for the president do you, do you honestly admit that many mps in our setting deceive voters just to win an election is that what is happening in fact it is part of our politics in general now oh really not mps alone not mps alone politicians deceive let me say without any and that that is what i find most most regrettable especially in the dispensation that we are today bola mm. i'm sure you can make comparisons and there are only shades of differences between them in the run-up to the 20 cc election i'm sure you saw what happened the promises led by Dr. Mahmoud Bawia, the current vice president and the candidate of the new patriotic party. You saw the promises. The economy played a very critical role. Bula. In fact, the economy was number one issue. And we were told that the, the hardships that Ghanaians were suffering at that time was inexcusable for, this go for the NDC government led by President Mahama to come back. And Bula, what was it? If you put the basic macroeconomic indicators at that time, a gallon of petrol was 14 Ghana CDs. Inflation was 15%. We had a, 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 a total indebtedness of 120 billion Ghana CDs. Uh, 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 which other? The city. Mm. The city at that time was four CDs to a dollar. And what did we hear on the plane? That this country is awash with money. A lie? Some people said they had worked, the vice president then, now, said he worked at the Bank of Ghana, and he knew that the money was here. And that you don't need even to borrow to build roads, then you don't need to even tax the people. With those level of taxation that we were talking about. Bula. These are the promises that you just mentioned that I'm talking about. Under this realm. So this is what happened. 
today as we speak. Bola, take each of the macroeconomic indicators I mentioned to you. Mm. Inflation is what? So you, 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 you believe that clearly they came promised and under delivered you see so that, that is one of the things i want Ghanaians to take judicious notice today mm. as we prepare for the 2024 elections number one but there's there's covid i mean there's ukraine russian war there are factors so would so, you so, cut them so, that so bola yes covid affected only ghana clearly not what about Cote d'ivoire resource staff burkina faso burkina faso they are running single digit inflation Burkina Faso. Can Burkina Faso compare their resources to Ghana? Look at their inflation. Look at their debt to GDP. Look at their, their, their exchange rate. All of them are stable. So how come that that COVID only affected Ghana? It jumped over uh, Burkina Faso and entered Ghana. Burkina Faso is closer to Ukraine than Ghana. But the vice president, is that not it? The, the vice president and, and, and of course the flag bearer of the MPP just last week delivered a speech. He says that all oh, they are going to abolish E-Levy. He's come through. He said they are chatting a new course. And he's his own man. He's going to... Did you listen to that speech? Bola. Yes. If you give a man who boasts of his potency mm -hmm. and you give him a wife for eight years, the woman has not even miscarried once before. And he comes again boasting about his potency. Will you give him another wife? Mm. Maybe he's trying. I mean, the time must reflect in the woman mm. you have given him. Mm. He says he's a very potent, very strong man. He can fire. He deliver. Mm. He fires without smoke. And after eight years, zero. The woman hasn't even been discarded. And he comes again asking you for another wife. Will you look at him at all? Maybe, Bola. maybe they are not Bola. When the good people also, of this yeah. country, you ride on the backs of the good people of this country to power. Right. On a plethora of empty promises. And after eight years, you hopelessly fail, woefully fail to deliver. Yes, but he, the first thing you should do to the people. He said he's a mate, he's not a driver. I'll, Give him the I'll, car. I'll come to that. Yeah. I'll come to that. Even he can you say he's a train driver. <laughs> Look, uh, 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 the first thing you ought to do, Bola, is to apologize to the people. So, Dr. Mahmoud Bawiya, His Excellency, the Vice President. You should apologize to Ghanaians. The first thing you should do is to apologize to Ghanaians. Why? He lied to Ghanaians. He's, he's, he's not a driver. He says that he's a mate. I'll, I'll, I'll come to that. Ah, so, he's a driver, eh? Yeah. Does he now, give, let him be the driver. Let he, him take have you heard him take credit for some things? You have not heard that he's the biggest digital expert. We have yeah, had. digitalization. He's so, done it. So, yeah. so those, those achievements belong to the mate. What he has been claiming. That one, it belongs to the mate. So the mate can make some claims that the achievements are his. But some others, he's only a mate. He has one in it. You see, I don't know what these people... No, do. but you take money from the passengers. That's his job. But yes. he's not driving the car. Yes, so the, so, yes, so, so, he so where does he take the credit? In taking the, the money driver is, the passengers. The driver is driving. He's not taking the money. Yes. So why do you take credit for the driving? So he said, now let him drive. At first, he was taking the money. So I am saying that... Yes. If in, on the one hand, we hear that it's a mate. And so, the mate should not take credit. Mm. On the other hand, you say he's a driver. Spare driver. So, you see, it's like a, a, it's like a, a, a bat. He's not a bird. He's not a mama. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of person is he? Because I'm saying that we should be truthful to the people of this country. And that's why I said that in this race that we have in 2024, Ghanaians must look out, number one, for trust. Who can you trust? Who can look you in the face and tell you the truth? He, said, the record. he says that he can work with 50 because, ministers. Give him the because, chance and because, he will prove it. Because he will do it. You see, Bola, yes. the MPP is not in opposition. Ally? Yes, they are in power. Are they not in government? Yes, they are. How can you hold the stick and let the dog bite you? You have to use the They stick. are holding the power. Mm. And we are making promises. The NDC can make promises because we are not in power. The MPP has no right to make promises. They are holding the power. They ought to implement the power for the betterment of the good people of our country. President Mahama says you run the next government with 60 ministers. Yes. Dr. Baumia says 15 ministers. Yes. So why don't you then give it to... Because Baumia says you bring it down to where? 50. That's what I'm saying that. Mm -hmm. 
the man has spoken. Right. We have heard him. Okay? He spoke to us in 2016 what they are coming to do. A lie? We've given you the mandate. We are now in the area. What has happened? Bola, never in the annals of our country's history has the country been reduced to such a sorry state. You think we are in a sorry state? Very sorry state. G give me five striking superior proposals that John Mahama has but, but before I come, yes. I'll come to that. Mm -hmm. They don't frighten the chief warrior with a mustache. A man in you don't frighten a chief warrior with a mustache. Mm. That's his trademark. Okay. A man with a man in tattered clothes doesn't need a second invitation for a fight. <laughs> Bola. Yes. I'm just indicating to you that when you hold political power, the good people who gave you that mandate expect you to transform that mandate into the betterment of their lives. Bola, and I just said to you, never in the annals of our country's history have we been so reduced to a sorry state. Mm. Bola, can you remember any time where we have defaulted on our debt? There the country has been declared bankrupt. When have you heard that Ghana was bankrupt? Gold, uh, 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 diamond, uh, uh, bauxite, cocoa, oil, mention anything, even lithium. God has added us even lithium again. And still... We are a very broke nation that is incapable of... I ask you a question. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to that. Because of time. Yes, I'm that. Give me five Bola. striking superior I'm just building proposals. It, I'm just building it up to something. Yes. To tell you that Ghanaians looking at their, the sorry state of their lives today are full of regret that they allowed themselves to be hoodwinked by this hopelessly incompetent and corruption reading government. Today, as we speak, I can tell you that many Ghanaians are eager. They wish December 7th is that what you are picking up? 2024. Yes. Really? I am telling you without any idea of doubt. Because I just gave you the, the comparison of the record. President Mama, inflation was 15%. Mm. There was a point where this government went to 54.1% inflation. A lot is dropping, yes. Where the city, they took the city at four cities to a dollar. And took it to 17 cities before. Now it's it, it came to 11. Now it's going to 13. When Dr. Bawiya told us that he had arrested the city and giving the, the key to the the the, the, the igp so, so uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, that, now you, you ha happily there's a, a record right dr mamur Boya and nana Kutrado have a record okay president mama has a record interrogate the two records and see where you are it's clear so five look, tracking records look, we are talking about this. i am just indicating to you yes. the highest economic growth rate under the ages of the fourth republic was when president mama was cham chairman of the economic management team in 2011, under President Mills, 14.1 percent. So, will you in say 2011, John Mahama was in charge of the economy at the time? Of course, he was the chairman no, of the EMT. So, no, he, he he's struggling to run away from the EMT to do because he has done a shoddy job, a hopelessly incompetent job, a woefully uh, 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 incompetent job. I that think he has Vice President Bowden yes, is incompetent. I, today, he's struggling to say that. Did you hear where he said, uh, 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 uh he was mentioned that I said, What a wonderful a economic team. management mm. team. Indicating that it was that team that was managing the economy. Now that he has hopelessly failed, he's running away from the economy. And that's why I'm giving you the record that under President Mama, Prime Mama accepts responsibility. Under him, in 2011, the country witnessed the highest economic growth. Not, not under the aegis of the fourth republic has anybody performed better. Fourteen point one percent, when he was chairman of the economic management team. Under the watch of Dr. Mahmoud Boya as chairman of the economic, team, we had the worst economic performance, zero point four percent economic growth, twenty twenty, under Dr. Bawiya's watch. So compare the two. So President you, Mama has the highest economic growth rate. President Mama is a better worst. manager of the economy. Far better. There, there, there is no show. Dr. I've just showed you uh, uh, inflation. I've showed you a state rate. 24 All of them. our economy is already running with digitalization. And the manufacturing industries are also running 24 hours. Go back and so, listen to him. He said it was a bad idea. Am I lying? But he says it's running now. And no. So, 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 what becomes, so, so if you said that you are something that is good. This same man who told us that Jomama's idea of a 24-hour economy is a bad idea. Listen to you. I'm sure you have the last, last week, place. No, but last week we had him. He says it's already running. So why lay claim to we, that? What, what becomes of the so, 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 24-hour so, so, so if it is running, why, 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 why will you criticize President Mama? President Mama says, I am coming and I will implement a 24-hour economy. Mm. He's going to leverage state resources 
to empower enterprises to work beyond Dr. The, the Dr. Barbara says that is already happening in the manufacturing industry. Do you know what he said? Yes. He said it was happening in the chop bar. That's what he said. I said that it was a bad idea that the mamas attempt to introduce 24 hour alcohol. It's a bad idea. Go and play the tape. It's out there. Now that he sees that Ghanaians are buying into present mamas idea. Because for the overwhelming majority of the youth, that is the only thing that holds an answer to their joblessness and hopelessness. 24 hour economy. Yes. Bola, mm. I am telling you that if you have manufacturing enterprises and they are going to hire three teams of people, yeah. rather than one, I mean, it stands to reason that more jobs will be created. Is that feasible? Looking at where we are now. Joe Mama did it. You remember under his watch, Tobinko, Kinafama, and, and uh, the other one, NS Chemist. Mm. Under the farmers. Yes. President Mama, uh, under his watch, they give a lot of financial resources to these enterprises and they went over time. Like I said, more people were employed as part of the, the uh, 24 hour economy he, he has every stage. And the, the level of uh, 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 productivity shot up nationally. Mm. And so, if the more you have this, you have the state support. And that's what President Obama says that he's going to leverage on state resources to, to empower. Create. Right. So that the job creates. So, uh, any youth listening to, to, mm. to, to, to me today should know that under this current level of hopelessness, this, they are throwing their hands in the air. In, in defeat, President Nana is coming has, up. Has given up. What? 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 Else? Did you hear uh, uh, President Nana Kufado? He that. says he has left everything to the man who is coming. You are where? What? This one, I'm not the one who said it. What do you make and, of, and, of, and, of and the man suffer? and the man who is holding power today? Yeah. And that's why I say that they are knowing Ghanaians. You are holding power, and you are still making promises. What do you take the people for? What do you make of the rich? Because when you hold the power, yes. you act. Bola. Yes. You don't hold power. Okay? The snake is lying before you and you go and hire a consultant about what you should do to the snake. What do you make of the rich shuffle? By so, the you are holding power. Yes. The people are suffering. Araji. The taxes, you yourself now admit that. Araji, calm down. Yes. Bad tax is terrible for the young guys. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Momo Yeah. All of them will take that away. You are in power now. Who takes? Who has the right to take so away? You want, you want Dr. Baumia to act now instead of waiting for... Because even like my very good friend Kojo Oponkruma said that he was even instrumental in the crafting yeah. of the Momo tax where he built up the tre threshold. Meanwhile, he's telling us today that he, he, he's running away from Momo to tell us that Ghanaians should continue for the next 10 months to pay an obnoxious tax that kills them every day. Businesses are collapsing every day. They should continue for the next 10 months to pay the tax for you to come back. The simple answer is that he's never coming back. Dr. Bahamia, he's never back. coming back. I can tell you by yeah. the grace of Allah on 7th January mm. 2025. You believe President that President Mama will be sworn President in? Mama will be sworn in as the President of the Republic to wipe the tears from the eyes of Ghanaians and bring hope to the youth and all the other people. Hey, let's, let's, let's stay on the race shuffle. What do you make of it? I mean, will the changes and the exits make a significant <coughs> difference? I mean, what do you think? Will it be a significant difference? Bola. Yeah. When you leave your salt in the open and there's a heavy damp wire, you have not covered it, will you find the salt back? Certainly not. That's what has happened. Oh, really? President Akufado and the MPP are trying to reclaim a salt which has been washed away and long gone to the sea. This reshuffle they have done is not for the good people of this country. It's not? Yes. It's a political event, President. Go and do an analysis of the appointees, especially the deputy ministers. Okay? Number one, he has removed all those who lost elections. Go and check. Any minister or deputy minister who lost his election has been removed. Why? All those who are voluntarily, mem members of parliament who voluntarily have indicated they are not coming back, they've removed them. So, it's an election gimmick that he's making to ensure that resources will be available to those he's putting as ministers to be able to campaign for the 2024 elections. Interesting. What, what, because, what? Mm -hmm. you see, why? The whole of this country, including when we in the NDC, the minority side, started saying that uh, 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 Honorable Ken Oforata, finance minister, mm -hmm. was running the country into a ditch but it's, about two years ago. Mm -hmm. but it's we started awesome. singing the song. I'm coming. I'm, I'm, Does that I'm, make you happy? I'm, I'm shaving you. I don't want you to touch your head. Mm. You see, for us, when we started singing this on Bola two years ago, that Kenafodata is a disaster for this country. 
we should get rid of him as fast as possible. They did not listen. Later, one year later, our colleagues on the other side, they listened to us and also joined and said, Ken must go. And I, why did the president not yield and do the reshuffle at that time? At least at that time, it would be more meaningful to make an economic impact. Today, you know what the president has done. And those who, and Ghanaians must listen, Ken has not gone anywhere. He's not. In fact, Ken is stronger, no. mm -hmm. Ken is stronger now than when he was finance minister. You know why? He is the, the uh, 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 senior advisor to the president on the economy. Senior advisor to the president on the economy. You know what that means? Is it, or, is it powerful than the <coughs> minister of finance? More powerful than the finance minister. Because the policy advisor to the president works directly with the president. Okay? In fact, he has the president's year 24 hours. So if they bring any policy issue before he even goes to cabinet, they will have to ask for his views. So any matter now as we speak, they want to talk about any economic matter, it will go to Kenoforata first. Not only that, the, the president has added him another position. He's a special envoy for the capital markets, markets and uh, external, external investment. investment. You know what that means? So even if you are dealing with uh, IMF, whom do you go and see? External decision, whom do you go and see? But we have the Minister of Finance, maybe you'd... My brother, my brother, Anta, let me congratulate him. But you know, it's a, I mean, Anta. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a smoke that has been sown by flies. The, the smallest flatless, they will all fly and leave him empty, naked. Well, well, Bola, yes, we are I am up. telling you without any item of doubt that Kenneth Forata today is more powerful than he was when he was finance minister. Ah, just ask yourself. Ah, Anta, my brother Anta uh, uh, is finance minister. Why are they appointing somebody as a uh, uh, special advisor in charge of the economy? Why? When Kenneth Forata was finance minister, did they appoint anybody as a uh, 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 special advisor on the economy? Who was there? Today, Anta is the, the, the finance minister. They are appointing somebody as a... Uh, 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 but, but, uh, we don't uh, have, we uh, don't have uh, much time. Uh, it's time. Senior. Yes. He didn't even say advisor. He said senior advisor. Uh, there are these other people. They are only small, small boys. He is senior advisor on the economy. Yes. It's now time for the mystery question, sir. You see? Right. Yes. So, pick <coughs> up. yes. Pick when, up. The, when the house has fallen, you ask whether the roof is still standing. Hmm? Mm. Okay, the dance of the uh, 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 good please the hyena. Mm. How can your mouth be full of water and you are blowing to the candy fire? <laughs> Alaji, please, let me speak question. And what do we have there, sir? Who has been the greatest president the NDC tradition yes. has ever produced? And the names are? Uh, Rollins, Mills, or Mahama? Mahama. The greatest president the NDC has ever produced. I want and to I, say that all yes. these have been great presidents the NDC has produced. Mm. From President Rollins to President Mills, mm. they have served this country with single-handed dedication and commitment. And they have served without any... Uh, 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 how do I put it? Destruction of the economy. Wrecking the lives of our people. Without doubt, they have served... There have been difficulties under their governments. So it will be difficult but, for you but, to choose. But, Rollins, <coughs> Mills, Mahama. I am saying that all of, them, all of them have been great for this country. Right. If you had a chance to go back in time and change any decision you took in your life, what will it be and why? As you wrap up. I, 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 just, I just accept that that is what Allah Almighty has made. As a Muslim. No regret. I have no You're regrets. Not anything that has happened, I believe it was destined by Allah Almighty to happen. So I accept it and I accept Allah's... Uh, uh, intervention in my life mm. and i want to say that i'm so thankful to allah almighty for the intervention in my life that i can never expect an iota of regret wow. Wow. i am a very satisfied person mm. notwithstanding the fact that i want to see this country better and, and that it, is why i'm working with his excellency president mahama and you think president mahama, back, yes on the 7th of january on the 7th of start. january take it from me bola if it doesn't happen you see Ghanaians have said it mm. they will not let bees bite them and flies will come and bite them again Allah so, a, B, a, so for, for the for the decision that has happened, first fool is not a fool, but this second of foolery, I can tell you that Ghanaians will never take it. Alaji, that's why I'm telling you that mm -hmm. Ghanaians cannot wait. Many millions of Ghanaians cannot wait for uh, 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 seventh December to come. They are eager for the thing to come. 
And Bola, I want you to write it to mark it down. Yeah. On 7th January, this country will experience a carnival like never before. It will be like our second independence. Dr. Baumia will be sworn in. Oh. There will be a second independence uh -huh. under the aegis of His Excellency President John Dramani Mahama. And you to are come sure. and wipe the tears. Yes. And that's why I said the carnival on the streets will be equal to a second independence. We we'll have gotten the eight years of MPP away as a bad dream. But let's wake up and say that this is a bad dream. Never again should they ever go through such a thing again. Thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure having you. Senior. The man who has died in the market, you don't need to announce it. It's senior. <laughs>